Hi, welcome to XI to I. I'm Noel Rappin, and today we're going to tell a JavaScript refactoring story called Separating from the DOM. Most web applications at one time or another have to talk to a third-party API that they don't control and didn't write. And a really good strategy for dealing with that is to have all of your access to that external API go through a wrapper object. Now, there are a couple of benefits that you get from that. One is that you control the API of the wrapper object, so you can define it in terms that are semantically meaningful to your application, rather than being restricted to whatever the web API's authors have chosen to offer you. Um, another one is that it becomes easier to test your application, because you only need to test it as far as the wrapper. You can stub the wrapper uh, and not have to go all the way to the API to test the rest of your application, and then you test the wrapper's interaction with the API separately. Uh, you may also be able, this may also make it easier for you to swap out the API for a different tool should that become necessary. Um, I don't often like to over oversell reuse as a, as a value of object-oriented techniques, but in this case, this, this can make it easier. One thing that I've noticed in a lot of front-end applications, a lot of JavaScript applications, uh, is that they tend to integrate very tightly with jQuery and with the underlying DOM. And one of the things I want to explore here is the idea of what happens when you treat jQuery and the DOM as an external API and try to write a wrapper class between your application and uh, jQuery and the DOM. So I have a small example here. It's a dual select box. Uh, this com came out of some actual code that I wrote for a project, and uh, some details have been changed to protect the innocent. We've got a leftmost select box that is a category, a rightmost select box that is a set of items, and when the category changes, uh, the contents of the item box actually change to reflect only items that belong to that category. Uh, and the way that this works, the, the implementation of this is that the page is loaded with every possible item, and uh, on page load, the items are stripped from them, associated with categories, and then they're pulled back in when the category changes. So here's the scratch code that I initially wrote to do this. Um, this was basically a spike. Uh, so it's got some things that are, are not intended to be permanent. For instance, you'll notice it's using the global namespace. Um, but you can see here that it is reading for all the options in the item list. It's going through them, and it is associating them with a category through a data category member and through jQuery. Um, and so it is setting up that object, which we're, we're associating categories to a set of actual HTML option tags. Um, and then we're clearing out the item list. We are, and then we are setting up a change handler so that when the category uh, select box changes, we clear the item list and then repopulate it with the item options that match that category. And again, we have actual option tags here, so we're just appending them into the item list. Now I want to start to refactor this. Um, there's, I mean, this code is functional, um, but it does have a couple of problems. Uh, it's, as I mentioned, talking to the global namespace. Um, it's kind of dense, it's not really semantically meaningful, it's a little bit hard to parse out what's going on here, uh, and we can fix all of those things. The first step to fixing them is to write some tests. So I did, uh, I'm using Jasmine here. Uh, as a point of fact, I actually have just inserted these this line of co this code and these specs into an otherwise empty Rails project using Jasmine Rice, um, which is obviously not an ideal way to do it for just a front-end project, but was a setup that I'm familiar with and, and could have and make happen quickly. Um, I'm also using Justin Searle's jQuery fixture uh, extension to Jasmine to enable me to create uh, some actual jQuery elements and affix them into the DOM. So I set up my category, I set up my item list, and I have three tests here. Uh, the first of which tests that the values coming in uh, are coming in and being copied into that global object uh, associated with the correct categories. The second test tests that the option list gets emptied on initial load. And then the third test tests that when the category changes, the option list changes as, as expected. And these tests all pass. Now, this is we're going back to the original set of code. Um, the first thing that I want to do here is I want to break this apart. I want to create, make this actually a class rather than a function. And I want that class to have its own data. I want that class to have its own methods that have meaningful names uh, in the context of what I'm trying to do. So here's what that starts to look like. Um, I have a class here called dual select. 
Uh, you'll also notice on the first two lines here that I have kept, at least temporarily, the original API, the init list inform uh, function is still there. Uh, what that enables, that enables the rest of the code to proceed as though the refactoring has not happened. So I don't have to make substantial changes to my tests uh, in order to, until the refactoring is done, if I had a lot of other code that depended on this uh, dual select, um, it would still continue to work while I was working on the refactoring and therefore I could focus on things that I was potentially breaking or not breaking in the refactoring without having to worry about API changes at the same time. So that's a, a useful technique. Um, the dual select class itself is mostly just separating out the functionality we've already seen behind methods that have uh, somewhat more meaningful names. The constructor sets up a data object uh, so that we don't have to go to the global namespace. Then the initialize method uh, is split up into extracting the items, setting up a change handler, uh, and updating the item list. Extracting the items performs the same functionality of extracting the, the option tags of that item list. Um, and then one by one, we strip them, uh, we take their category data, um, we strip them of their category data, and we put them in that items, uh, 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 items variable. Then lower down here, you can see that we set the change handler, uh, which calls another method called update item list. Update item list clears the item list, and then again, it's the same functionality. It's finding the, this currently selected category ID uh, and appending the options that match that category. And with one minor change, the tests pass. Since we're no longer using the global namespace, we need to update the test slightly to use the actual dual select being returned by init list and form. Uh, and check its data directly rather than going to the global namespace. But other than that, all of the test logic still holds and the tests still pass. So here's another look at some of the code in that dual select class. And the one thing that jumps out to me at this point uh, is all of the string literals uh, that are being used as jQuery arguments and all of those calls to jQuery that seem kind of mixed in. So in order to take a first step towards um, separating my logic code from my uh, DOM and jQuery code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those jQuery calls and I'm going to pull them out into methods of their own, uh, which looks like this. I have four jQuery calls that are actually doing three different things. Uh, I'm looking for an item list, I'm calling the options of the item list, and I'm calling a category list. Um, so I've pulled these out into their own methods with Slightly more meaningful names, although admittedly in this case there's not a whole lot of difference. Um, and then I can go back to the original code and replace all of those jQuery calls with calls to these methods. And this is actually, in this in the case where I was actually doing this in production code, this is actually where I stopped. Um, I was kind of happy with this. I thought it read a lot more clearly. The string literal, literals were kind of blocking me uh, in terms of reading the code. And so I stopped here. But... I was thinking about how I might push this forward, and in this case, uh, for something at this complexity level, this might be overkill, um, but I think it's an interesting technique if you have more complicated uh, logic in your front end terms. So the first thing that I want to do is start to actually explicitly create this wrapper between my code and the DOM, which I can do by taking those three methods and just putting them in their own class. So now I have a dual select DOM class, it has the same three item list, op item list options and category list methods. Um, and in order to use this, all I need to do is update the dual select class uh, to give it an instance method that is a new one of these dual select DOM things, and then take all of those calls that were going to methods of the dual select class that are now going to the DOM class and replace the, those references with references that point to that DOM object. This doesn't break any test, it's a purely internal change. Um, and we now have explicitly Im inter implemented a uh, wrapper object, partial a, a, a wrapper object that partially uh, separates our logic from the DOM. And in theory, we actually could go into our test and replace, uh, write a test such that the test is actually creating its own select test select DOM object, uh, and 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 write the tests against that. One thing that you quickly realize if you try to do that is that although this code no longer directly accesses jQuery, it still is very dependent on expecting to have jQuery objects. So I have calls to uh, jQuery's each, 
jQuery is removed, jQuery is val, jQuery is append, all that stuff in this code that is you know nominally separated from from jQuery and the DOM. And I can get rid of that. I can get rid of most of that. And what it takes is a little bit of change of responsibilities between the DOM class and the dual select class. And specifically, we're moving some of the jQuery, these further jQuery accesses, all of these accesses that depend on jQuery methods uh, and DOM access, we'll move them into that DOM class. So um, what that looks like is uh, we take our dual select DOM class, and we've now added a couple of extra methods to it that are going to be points of contact between this DOM class and our original dual select class. So whereas before we just had a class that returned uh, the option tags themselves, we now have an itemless data method that actually takes those options and replaces them with a um, with a J, uh, JavaScript object that has the category and value, but it's not a jQuery object. It's just a plain JavaScript object that has a category and a value. On the other end, we've added a method called append to item list, which takes in a value uh, and creates an option tag to append it to the item list rather than actually have our select class know about option tags and add them to the item list directly. Um, just as a style point here, I'm not normally in love with having CoffeeScript functions be single liners. I'm doing it here to preserve space and let this all show up uh, um, on a slide more easily. In any case, um, we can now use this dual select class. It requires a little bit more, a little bit of change in our actual, uh, in our actual dual select class. Uh, add option to list uh, is now taking a data object, the data object that's returned by that item list data. Um, and it is now, instead of storing full option tags, it's just storing the value of the data. Um, and then in the update list, rather than actually appending the, the object in this class, we're passing that, that information over back to that DOM class, by, and we're just passing it the value and, and having the DOM class have the responsibility of creating the object. Um, and so what we wind up here now is we now actually explicitly have a wrapper object that is handling all of our jQuery and DOM responsibilities between our widget and the DOM. And again, while that might be a little bit of overkill here, we now actually could relatively easily go in and create a test DOM class that didn't wasn't backed by the by an actual DOM, but was backed by just a data set uh, and unit test our dual select against that rather than effectively integration tests integration testing it against the DOM. So this is a technique that also enables a certain kind of outside in testing in JavaScript where you have integration tests that point to the DOM and unit tests that don't. Um, so again, while I think that you know this the amount of logic in this class might not support it, uh, it's a useful technique I think to keep in mind as you're writing more complicated jQuery. Uh, so that's what I have. Uh, if you like this, you can see find out more great content at the TableXI blog, www.tablexi.com, or follow on Twitter at TableXI. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, I also have my book, Master Space and Time with JavaScript, which is available at noelrappin.com. You can follow me on Twitter at noelrapp. Uh, this has been XI to I, and we will talk to you again soon. Thanks.